गुड मॉर्निंग ऑल ऑफ यू टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट वन ऑफ द वाटर प्यूरिफिकेशन प्रोसेस दैट इज एरेशन द एम ऑफ दिस प्रोसेस इज टू ब्रिंग वाटर इन इंटीमेट कॉन्टैक्ट विथ एयर एंड दिस विल सॉल्व द फॉलोइंग परपजेस सच एस बाय यूजिंग दिस प्रोसेस द बैक्टीरिया कैन बी किल्ड इन दिस प्रोसेस ऑफ एरेशन द ऑक्सीजन इज एब्जॉर्ब बाय वाटर and carbon dioxide is liberated thus the carbon dioxide can be removed to the extent of about 70% by aeration which will result in less corrosion to the pipes the aeration easily removes hydrogen sulfide and hence the odor due to this gas is removed by aeration the iron and manganese present in water are also oxidized to certain extent by aeration so these are the different purposes second one is what are different methods of aeration so following are the four methods of aeration which are generally adopted in the treatment of water such as air diffusion cascades spray nozzles tray tower and trickling bed so let us first discuss about the air diffusion method of aeration so in this method you can see here perforated pipes are installed at the bottom of the tank and the compressed air from the compressor is blown through these pipes and the air bubbles these are the air bubbles these are the air bubbles while coming up from the bottom of the tank will come in contact with the water content in the tank and by this aeration of water is achieved the depth of this aeration tank is kept as about 2.5 meter to 3 meter and they work on the principle of continuous flow with minimum detention period of 15 minutes so here from here the raw water will enter into the tank and from the compressor the air is blown through this uh, water contained in the tank and after the close contact of air with water the aeration process is achieved and the aerated water is then uh, collected in the tank the next method is cascades so cascade is a waterfall and a simple cascade consist of a series of three or four steps see here these are the steps and these steps are generally made up of concrete or metal the water is allowed this is the water is allowed to flow through the uh, velocity of 0.3 meter per second and with a fall through a height of about 1 to 3 meter and as thin sheets of water falls through a height the dissolved gases like carbon dioxide gets released and oxygen from air gets entered in it the next method is spray nozzles in in this method the water is sprinkled in fine jets through nozzles to a height of about 2 meter to 2.5 meter having diameter 20 mm to 40 mm and spacing of about 0.5 meter to 3.5 meter the discharge of water through a nozzle is at a rate of about 5 to 10 liter per second 
This method of aeration removes carbon dioxide to the extent of about 90%. But it requires a considerable head of water for its working. Next method is tray tower. So tray tower consists of a central nozzle and different diameters of trays are prepared. Thin sheets of water, so water will coming out of the central nozzle and it will flow, it will drop down the trays and collected at the bottom most tray. These trays are placed at a distance of 250 to 750 mm. The discharge of water and this method is much more effective and removes carbon dioxide to the extent of about 90 to 95 percent. The next method is trickling bed. In this method, the beds of coke or slag are prepared. The here you can see these are the beds of coke. The beds are supported over perforated trays. The size of the coke varies from 50 to 75 mm and the beds are arranged in vertical series one above the other. The depth of each bed is about 225 mm and the vertical distance between successive bed is about 100 to 150 mm. The water is discharged through perforated pipes placed at the level of top bed and it is then allowed to trickle down from top bed to bottom bed. And during this trickling process, the aeration of water is achieved. This method is found to be less effective than that of spray nozzles, but it gives better result than those obtained by the method of cascades. So, these are the different methods of aeration. Thank you.